Ladies and gentlemen, guys, we'd like to welcome you to the Soto You Dig. This is your host of the evening, in the afternoon, and the morning, apparently, DJ Just JOK. And what I'm here to do is I'm here to report a story to you guys. And I haven't had a lot of time to put this up because I found out about it. It's really, really uh, late breaking news. So here we go. An Aventura man has been arrested in Plantation, Florida, as a part of a federal investigation into suspicious packages that were sent to prominent critics of President Donald Trump, according to reports. While federal investigators have not named the suspect, which we are naming him, his name is Caesar Sayoc Jr. C E A C E S A R Sayoc S A Y O C Jr. That is his name. So we are actually putting his name out there, okay? Now, while federal investigators hadn't at the time put his name out there, and that was a while ago, but his name is out now. Um, they identify him as a 56-year-old Caesar Sayoc Jr. of Aventura. Now, records show Sayoc has a history of arrest in Florida on a variety of offenses, most of them involving theft. Broward County, which you guys should be familiar with Broward County because that was the county that dealt with the XXX murder, and I talked about them a lot and talked to them, and so shout out to uh, Broward County and the, uh, the, the uh, investigators and the people out there. Now... Their court records indicate Sayoc was born in Brooklyn, New York. NBC News reported that DNA evidence played a part in the arrest. Now, Sayoc's suspected role in the plots remain unclear. The U.S. Department of Justice uh, is expected to provide updates during a press conference scheduled for 2.30 p.m. Now, a police source told the South Florida Sun Sentinel that authorities tracked the suspect to plantation near Broward Boulevard and State Road 441. Jim DeFed of CBS4 News of Miami reported the arrest was made at about 10.30 a.m., which wasn't that long ago, at an auto parts store in Plantation. DeFed reported a loud explosion, possibly from a law enforcement device, uh, was heard during the arrest. Now, MB MSNBC tweeted a photo of the suspect's van, which you guys will see that floating across my screen which appeared to show stickers or other decals covering most of the vehicle's windows, uh, U.S. postal investigators were seen inspecting the van. The Sun Sentinel reported the van was covered with pro-Trump stickers. I want you guys to put a pin in that part of the story. We'll come back to it. Federal authorities covered the, uh, the van with a blue tarp, loaded it onto a truck, and drove it away, according to reports. Florida Governor Rick Scott said in a tweet that he briefed that uh, that he had been briefed by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement on developments regarding the attempted bombings. Any attempt to harm others is, is, is disgusting and has no place in Florida or our country, Scott said on Twitter. I appreciate the hard work of law enforcement to bring swift justice to whoever is responsible for these cowardly acts. Now, CNN broke the news, followed soon after by NBC, News uh, reported that the man had been taken into custody for questioning. Both reports cited unnamed law enforcement sources. Sarah is Isger, Sarah Fl Flores. Let's just say Sarah Flores. That's a little bit easier to pronounce. If you guys would do me a favor and hit the thumbs up, it'll share the show and let other people know that we are live. Okay, do that for me. Sarah Flores, director of public affairs at the Department of Justice, later confirmed the basic details on Twitter. We can confirm one person is in custody, Flores tweeted. The package is disguised or described as similar in appearance and design to uh, and, and design to pipe bombs were addressed to former President Barack Obama, former Vice President Joe Biden, and Hillary Clinton. The arrests come as a number of similar devices has grown to 12. The latest were addressed to the, uh, the New Jersey Senator Cory Booker and former National Intelligence Director James Clapper. Law enforcement officials told the Associated Press the devices, which had timers and batteries, were not rigged to explode upon opening. It's unclear if they had failed or where they were never meant to explode. I want you guys to take another pen and put it in that part of the story. Take your pen, bookmark that, we'll come back to it. Right, he's not, he's, he's of some other nationality, whatever it is. What's going on, guys? I see you guys in the chat. Do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. It'll share the show and let other people know that we're live, if you would, please. Now, they have been in Florida connections. 
There, there have been Florida connections to the case since early uh, in the investigation. The Miami Herald uh, reported the packages sent to Clinton, Obama, for former CIA Director John Brennan, former Attorney General Eric Holder, and billionaire George Soros all had the same return address, which was U.S. Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz office in Sunrise. Now, of course, that sounds ridiculous and rightfully so. Let's keep going. Meanwhile, an official told the Associated Press that a search of postal database suggested at least one of the packages may have been mailed from Florida, leading authorities to Opelika. The U.S. Postal Service uh, facility there handles mail sent from Broward, Miami-Dade, and Monroe counties, according to reports. The FBI also said that the package to Booker was intercepted in Florida. The bombs are reportedly about six inches long and the package with, uh, with powder and broken glass. The first bomb was delivered Monday to the New York compound of Soros, a, uh, a major Democratic donor. Trump on Friday complained on Twitter that, quote, this bomb stuff was taking attention away from the upcoming election and said critics were wrongly blaming him and his heated rhetoric. And I do agree with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you guys the uh, the news footage. You guys tell me what you think in the comments section in the live chat. Share the show. Let other people know that we are live. Let's go ahead and get this fair uses popping and get the videos going. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And I do believe that we are covered under U.S.C. 107, but even if we are, I still like to say it anyway. Let's go ahead and get it, guys. Uh, Craig, uh, our understanding is that a person by the name of Caesar Sayoc Jr., uh, C E S A R, last name is uh, spelled S A Y O C Jr., uh, currently lives in Florida, originally from uh, the New York area, uh, previously known to uh, law enforcement. Uh, uh, he had some run ins with law enforcement in the past, uh, has been arrested in connection uh, with this uh, bomb probe. Uh, he's believed to be 56 years old. We had mentioned that earlier. Uh, and so uh, that reporting from my colleagues Pete, William and Pete Williams and Jonathan Deanst. Again, repeating, uh, Caesar Sayoc Jr., uh, 56 years old, currently living in Florida, has been arrested in connection with the bombing probe and is the person that is expected to be charged uh, here this afternoon. We know that we're going to have a press conference at 2.30. Um, a little bit of confusion as to whether or not a criminal complaint is ready on him yet, but we'll get some court documents as soon as the, uh, uh, as soon as the folks over uh, in the federal prosecutor's office can get them to us. As Does soon he as have a have record? Uh, this person is believed to have a prior record. Um, there's a little bit of confusion about that record, about some of the things that he has in his past. So right now, the NBC News investigative team, it, we're, we're pouring over his records. Um, and I think that we're going to be able to, uh, um, uh, we're going to be able to get that. In addition, we have a, uh, a picture of of him that I think we're going to be able to show uh, shortly um, from a prior arrest. So uh, let, let me get back to work on that if I can, yeah. Craig, but I'll, I'll recap it. We had originally said before, white male in his uh, in his 50s, we uh, we then circled that around to 56, and now we can name the person as Caesar Sayoc Jr. That is the person that's been uh, taken into custody. I uh, believe that this uh, van either belongs to him or is something that he drives or right. is in connection with this, the one that we're looking at live on screen right now. And uh, we're to continue to get some more information as well as what he's actually going to be charged with uh we should be hopefully getting that in the, the next uh, right. hour or so all right justice if you would if you guys have any information that you want to send me do me a favor and please email it to me so if my brother jason please email me at the so do you dig at gmail.com um that is the easiest place for me to get it is to get it through my email if you would email it to me and i'll be uh and i'll be able to get right to it Correspondent Pete Williams also reporting that DNA evidence, DNA evidence played a role in his arrest. Go ahead and get this video playing. Hey, what do we have? 
Uh, so, Craig, we had said a moment ago that a person was detained in custody for questioning. We can uh, rank that up considerably. What we're told now is that a person has been arrested in connection with this string of package bombs and will face charges in connection with the bombing. I'm not sure exactly what the charges will be. I don't know if the conclusion is that this is the only person involved, but I'm told now that a person has been arrested and will be charged in connection with the bombing. Uh, we know that there'll be an announcement at the Justice Department later this afternoon, and my expectation was if we got to that stage of making an announcement, it would be that they have arrested someone that they think is actively involved in these bombings. So I think we can conclude, uh, based on what we've been told by several federal officials, that they have made an arrest in Florida of a man that they will charge in connection with these uh, this string of package bombs and that we'll hear more about it and details about it this afternoon at 2.30 from Attorney General Jeff Sessions and other authorities in New York who were involved uh, so actively in, in this investigation. But this is the break they were hoping for and they've been leading up to this. We've, uh, we've known a lot of details that we haven't reported because we didn't want to jeopardize the investigation about a number of people in Florida that they were focused on, talking to, watching very carefully. But let's just step back here for a second because we're going to become involved in, in reporting all these details when they come out. But this is a good time to pause and just think about how rapidly this investigation has moved. Sure. Now, granted, this you had a huge advantage in this bombing investigation in that virtually all of the devices that you're seeing in this graphic with the exception of the one to George Soros which police disrupted just to because they didn't know what they were dealing with at that point they have all those devices they have that huge trove of in, of uh, of uh, uh, evidence from those devices and they also have the fact that these were repeatedly sent apparently from Florida from the same they went through the same mail distribution center it would appear and so that's all great investigative detail. But still, to have an arrest this quickly yeah. is really quite stunning. Um, and it's, it's just uh, a, an enormous success for law enforcement. Uh, although, obviously, we have to do all the usual caveats that we don't know what these charges are going to be. And, of course, uh, all they are is charges. It doesn't mean that they did it. It's just very important to note that it's merely the charging at this point. But it's an important turning point in this investigation. Pete, stand by for me if you can. I've got a few follow-ups, but Tom Winter is uh, here with me as well. And Tom, I understand you have some new information. Too. Yeah, so uh, Pete and I have been talking about this for the last half hour. So Pete, I have uh, confirmed multiple uh, uh, senior federal law enforcement officials to NBC News. It is a male in his 50s uh, that has uh, been taken into custody here in regards to this. So just a little bit of a clarification as far as, uh, or not a clarification, but an update uh, as far as uh, who may be behind this. So a male in his 50s and as Pete has so uh, clearly uh, said uh, taken into custody and is expected to be facing some federal charges uh, that we'll hear about uh, in a little bit. So um, that's something that's uh, that's still to come, but just a little bit more detail on the suspect. We're waiting a name on that suspect. We, we do not have it yet, uh, uh, but we'll hopefully get that for you here shortly. Again, his name is Caesar Sayout Jr. That's the name so far, guys. What's going on? Do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. It'll share the show and let other people know that we're live. Post your comments in the comment section. Guys, don't block or time out anybody. Let's get it in. Hit that thumbs up. Do we know if this is someone who was known previously to law enforcement? I'm not quite ready to... Uh, to discuss that. There's a little bit of confusion about that, uh, about that point. It, it, this may be a person, though, that, is, um, uh, that did spend time in the New York State or New York City area previously. Okay. Um, that is a little bit of additional information that I can provide, is that my understanding as of an hour ago, uh, this is a person who uh, is originally from New York State or from New York City, um, but, um, uh, but I'm waiting to get some more information. And obviously this is fluid, and sure. we don't have the person's name yet, so we need to kind of check out all this information. Uh, uh, Pete, the scene here in Plantation, Florida, we continue to watch these, these, these federal officials, local police as well. Uh, we saw some members of the NYPD on the scene. Uh, it would appear as if, based on what we've been looking at, courtesy of this lo local news chopper, um, that this is a, a, a situation that is under control. This does not appear to be some sort of uh, active situation, Pete. Do we know if this, this man who's in his 50s was taken into custody without incident, or is that something that we don't know? at this point no we don't know any of those details at this point but um, this you know uh, 
this is someone that they, they, they focused on, I think, just this morning, um, because as of last night, it did not seem to many federal officials that we talked to that uh, anything, there'd be any significant break in the case for the next 24 hours. That's as of last night. And then, of course, two things happened today. One is the discovery of these two additional devices, one at the Opalaka Sorting Center and the other in New York at a Midtown Mail facility. But uh, they just got much more interested very quickly in this person in Florida. And uh, we started to get indications that things were moving in that direction several hours ago. Um, and, and now, obviously, they've, they've moved. Some of the packages were uh, canceled, did have stamps on the postmarks. And um, I'm told from our social media people that we're getting lots of questions about, well, why is the post office delivering some of these packages when you can tell from looking at the envelopes that they weren't canceled, that they weren't postmarked? And the answer to that is, what we're told by postal authorities is that odd-shaped packages like these clearly don't go through any kind of sorting machine. In some cases, they will be canceled or stamped with a postmark, uh, hand stamped uh, to cancel the stamps. But in some cases, they don't bother. They just push them through. So that's why you, you don't see cancellations or postmarks on all of these packages. But in any event, because of the postmarks and other reasons, they've been able to trace these yeah. packages to Florida. And they are doing interviews with people in Florida now, not just postal workers, but other people that they believe may have information important to the investigation. This one, this time, addressed to James Clapper. As you're pointing out, the former director of national intelligence, and it was supposed to go to the CNN offices just a few blocks up the street from where I'm standing. James Clapper talked about this just a few moments ago. Take a listen. I do want to uh, just echo one thing that John Brennan said, and that is this is not going to uh, silence uh, the administration's critics. I think anyone who uh, has in any way been a critic of, uh, publicly been a critic of uh, President Trump uh, needs to be on an extra alert and take some cautions, precautions, uh, particularly with respect to, to mail. Indeed, because authorities are telling us thus far, all of these packages have been mailed to Democrats or people who have been outspoken in terms of their criticism against President Trump. So, just yesterday, authorities here in New York mentioned that they are alerting people in the area that they should also be very cautious. Authorities also pointed out that they have had an increase in tips of 139% of people calling in and saying that they are suspicious of something, but mm. also offering whatever kind of tips they can to authorities. See where we're at. Mr. Uh, okay, got you. Let me go ahead and uh, get you guys the next little bit of footage. Let's keep going. Do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. It'll share the show. It's just other people aren't up this early. They weren't expecting us to broadcast. I didn't have time to share the show. Do me a favor and just hit the thumbs up, guys, if you would, please. Uh, Craig, uh, our understanding is that a person by the name of Caesar Sayoc Jr., uh, C E S A R, last name is uh, spelled S A Y O C Jr., uh, currently lives in Florida, originally from uh, the New York area, uh, previously known to uh, law enforcement. Uh, uh, he had some run ins with law enforcement in the past, uh, has been arrested in connection. So for uh, for people that wanted some information on him, I did get um, an email with some information on Caesar Sayak, Sayak, Sayak. I can't Sayak that name. Uh, his name is C E S A R. First name, last name S A Y O C. Birth date March seventeenth of nineteen sixty two. And uh, let's see, what else did you send me? There's also a, uh, a screenshot of reported births in New York City at that time, which I do appreciate that screenshot. What else do we have here? Okay. And we also have an address mm. that was listed in 1995, which was, uh, which was 1801 South Ocean, and that's in Hollywood, Florida. So I won't give the actual apartment number, but that was the uh, the address that, that uh, was listed here so far. So that's a little bit of additional information. 
Uh, man, you guys work quick, man. Shout out to my brother in the chat. You guys work very, very quickly, man. Let's keep going. I got a few. Yeah, exactly. I got a few more videos. Let's keep going, guys. Uh, with this uh, bomb probe. Uh, he's believed to be 56 years old. We had mentioned that earlier. Uh, and so uh, that reporting from my colleagues Pete, William and Pete Williams and Jonathan Deanst, again repeating, uh, Caesar Sayoc Jr., uh, 56 years old, currently living in Florida, has been arrested in connection with the bombing probe and is the person that is expected to be charged uh, here this afternoon. We know that we're going to have a press conference at 2.30. Um, a little bit of confusion as to whether or not a criminal could complaint is ready on him yet, but we'll get some court documents as soon as the uh, uh, as soon as the folks over uh, in the federal prosecutor's office can get them to us. As Does soon he as have a have record? Uh, this person is believed to have a prior record. Um, there's a little bit of confusion about that record, about some of the things that he has in his past. So right now, the NBC News investigative team, it, we're, we're pouring over his records. Um, and I think that we're going to be able to uh, um, uh, we're going to be able to get that. In addition, we have a uh, a picture of him that I think we're going to be able to show uh, shortly um, from a prior arrest. So uh, let, let me get back to work on that if I can, yeah. Craig, but I'll, I'll recap it. We had originally said before, white male in his uh, in his 50s. We uh, we then circled that around to 56, and now we can name the person as Caesar Sayoc Jr. That is the person that's been uh, taken into custody. I uh, believe that this uh, van either belongs to him or is something that he drives or right. is in connection with this, the one that we're looking at live on screen right now. Now, and uh, we're going to continue to get some more information as well as what he's actually going to be charged with. Uh, we should be hopefully getting that in the, the next uh, our, hour or so. Our justice correspondent Pete Williams also reporting that DNA evidence, DNA evidence played a role in his arrest. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. All Thanks right, for watching. All right, all right, all right. Let's keep going. We got a couple more I need to show you guys real quick. And I want to say hi to you guys. What's up to our Chorus 15, Tanisha, uh, Lucky. Uh, April, William, Critterlin, let me see, let me see, Critters, Heartland, Jay Rich, uh, Jason Gunn, Arlene, all of you guys, uh, Karen Grayley is also in the chat. Uh, we got a few more things to show you guys to kind of update you, because like I said, this is pretty late breaking, so if you guys would, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up, share it, let other people know that we're live, they will come over here, come check it out, and hear what we got going on. Deb's death insurance, that's a great point. Very good point. Guys, this is video footage as of like minutes, if not maybe about an hour or so ago. This is very, 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 very recent. So this is pretty late breaking. Thank you guys that are here right now. We got a few more videos to show you guys. As you guys can see, what they're doing, is, I don't know why they're covering up that van. I don't, I don't really know what they, what they do that for. What's the purpose of that? But they're covering that van up. That was the van that he was actually driving. Okay. So here we go. We got a few more to show you guys here, real quick. I want to, I want you guys to see this. This, and we just want to uh, alert people to this. We've got some video that uh, we believe that this is uh, Cesar Sayak. We, he's at a Trump rally. <laughs> You study these Let's take a listen there. It's undated, so we don't know when this happened, but you, you can hear Trump speaking in the background there, and it certainly looks people. like uh, Caesar Sayak, the guy in that mugshot. Wow. In that photo. 
So, of course, what they're trying to do is they're trying to paint a narrative and say that this guy is a Trump supporter. And because of that, this is what he um, targeted the uh, the Democrats for. So I'm going to show you guys this again. I want to uh, alert people to this. You've got some video that uh, we believe that this is uh, Cesar Sayak. We, he's at a Trump rally. You take a look at these people. You study these Let's take a listen. There, it's undated, so we don't know when people. this happened. But you, you can hear Trump speaking in the background there. And it certainly looks people. like... Uh, Cesar Sayak, the guy in that mugshot. Wow. In that photo. And they're showing that from apparently that was a live video that he had did. We uh, Let me see. We got a couple more I need to show you guys real quick, and then we're going to go ahead and wrap up. You know, before I, I begin, uh, I want to say a few words about the news this morning of suspicious packages being sent to various public figures and a news organization. Many of you and others across our country have asked after me and my family, and I'm very grateful for that. We are fine, thanks to the men and women of the Secret Service uh, who intercepted uh, the package addressed to us long before it made its way to our home. Every day, we are grateful for their service and commitment, and obviously, uh, never, never more than today. But it is a troubling time, isn't it? And it's a time of deep divisions, and we have to do everything we can to bring our country together. Hope you guys caught that, man. And I've got some more uh, emails coming in here. If you guys would do me a favor and uh, hit the uh, thumbs up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get to those here in just a second. And I'm going to show you guys again. This is what we have going on. And we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, Craig, uh, our understanding is that a person by the name of Caesar Sayoc Jr., uh, C E S A R, last name is uh, spelled S A Y O C Jr., uh, currently lives in Florida, originally from uh, the New York area, uh, previously known to uh, law enforcement. Uh, uh, he had some run ins with law enforcement in the past, uh, has been arrested in connection uh, with this uh, bomb probe. Uh, he's believed to be 56 years old. We had mentioned that earlier. Uh, and so uh, that Reporting from my colleagues Pete William and Pete Williams and Jonathan Deanst. Again, repeating, uh, Caesar Sayoc Jr., uh, 56 years old, currently living in Florida, has been arrested in connection with the bombing probe and is the person that is expected to be charged uh, here this afternoon. We know that we're going to have a press conference at 2:30. Um, a little bit of confusion as to whether or not a criminal complaint is ready on him yet, but we'll get some court documents as soon as the uh, uh, as soon as the folks over uh, in the federal prosecutor's office can get them to us. As Does he have a have record? Uh, this person is believed to have a prior record. Um, there's a little bit of confusion about that record, about some of the things that he has in his past. So right now, the NBC News investigative team, it, we're, we're pouring over his records. Um, and I think that we're going to be able to, uh, um, uh, we're going to be able to get that. In addition, we have a, uh, a picture of him that I think we're going to be able to show uh, shortly um, from a prior arrest. So uh, let's let me get back to work on that if I can, yeah. Craig, but I'll, I'll recap it. We had originally said before, white male in his uh, in his 50s, we uh, we then sort Like I say, that information we've already got. So let me see what you guys have sent me so far. A uh, high school picture, he was just on the team. I don't, I don't think that's a picture of him. Okay, yeah, that doesn't look like a picture of him. Okay. Okay, got another picture here. I'm going to blow this up. Let me see if I can, uh, you know, no pun intended, by the way. Let's see. Because it should say his name in here somewhere. Caesar Sayak. Wow. Okay. Let me see. On the bottom. 
So members, Lisa, Andy, Israel, Mark, Jenny, Father, Caesar. Okay, got you, Jason. I appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and get this on the screen for you guys. I think I could do that for you. Very good job, Jason. Excellent job. Let me go ahead and get this on the screen for you. Now, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut this down just a little bit so you guys can actually see this. Okay. Let me see. Let's go top. Let's cut the top. Oh, no. That's left. Cut the top down just a bit. Okay. Here we go. So I can show you guys this picture. Hopefully you can see it. Let me crop some more of this off the uh, left hand side. And then I'm gonna break out my tool here, which is whiteboard. All right, here we go. What they're saying is this name right here, if you guys can see that, they're saying that's him right there. What do you guys think? It's pretty good investigative work, huh? Again, man, that's a shout out to my brother, Jason Gunn. Let me see, let me make this a little bit thicker so you guys can see it because that's thin. So here we go. The name is right there, which you guys should be able to see. Okay. And he's next to Father, whatever his name is. What is his name? Father Mulligan. He's to the right of him, which would be right here. Yeah, he kind of does, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. He really does. Jason said Trump did nothing. Caesar did. So how can it be a false flag? Set up, set up. They can't find bank robbers and missing kids, but they found this guy. I'm just saying, I think it's a bit odd my damn self because even the people that were reporting this were saying that you know, this is abnormal for them to move this quick and to get a suspect in this quick. Where, where did you send it? Did you email it to me, Brielle? If you guys would, if you guys are trying to contact me, I have my email open right now. If you, whatever you send me, if you'll email it, I'll get that. And right now I've got email messages from my guy, Jason Gunn. And uh, Darcy Ann right now. That's what I, I'm in my email right now. So I'll leave this on the screen just for a second. And I'm going to clear this off for you guys. So we can go ahead and make in, make, uh, make into the uh, next point of this uh, story here. You be breaking your neck to get in contact with me. Uh, I'm very easy to get in contact with. If I give you a method to contact me, then contact me there. If I say contact me by way of my email, why contact me in a place where I'm not at? <laughs> right? I tell you guys, the best place to contact me is my email. Um, every once in a while, I'll get to those other things. If I open up the call-in show, then I'll only see those messages at that point. I'm not constantly checking that thing. But I'm constantly checking my email. I know Tommy tells y'all to email him. And um, sometimes people don't think that's the best method to contact him. But he's telling you that's the best method to contact him. This is the best method to contact me. Is to hit that email address right here on the screen. Because I'm looking at it right now. I'm gonna refresh the email and see if I've gotten any new emails. Yep, all I got is just Darcy Ann's right now. Okay, 
So let me go ahead and uh, move on to my uh, to my next video real quick. So if you would, Brielle, do me a favor and just and e and just email me. Okay. So it should come through here in just a minute. So if you email me at thesodayadig at gmail.com, I should see it pop up here. And right now, um, I have a young lady that sent me a bunch of emails this morning. And then I got Nate. Nate sent me an email. And then I've got one from uh, Darcy Ann, Jason Gunn, and a bunch of other ones that were like from the past few days. So I'm still waiting on that. These terrorizing acts are despicable and have no place in our country. No place. I've instructed authorities to spare no resource or expense in finding those responsible and bringing them to swift and certain justice. And we will prosecute them, him, her, whoever it may be, to the fullest extent of the law. These terrorizing acts are despicable and have no place in our country. No place. I've instructed authorities to spare no resource or expense in finding those responsible and bringing them to swift and certain justice. And we will prosecute them, him, her, whoever it may be, to the fullest extent of the law. Now, for people that were wondering how they were able to catch him so quick, well, you heard it from the president's mouth himself, and he said they will spare no expense, any cost, find this person, and they did. They found him pretty quick. They found him pretty quick. So let me see what Darcy Ann sent me. What did you send me, Darcy Ann? Okay. Okay, here we go. We can give you guys some of this information. Okay, this is a little bit extra about him that uh, that we did not know. Let me see, uh, DJ, they stated that they have DNA evidence that could mean fingerprints. FBI has a database and he was arrested before. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. I'm from Broward. This guy is fishy. Okay, for sure. Got you. So I'm gonna read what uh, Darcy Ann sent me. This is a little bit more information on the uh, the Sayak dude. And uh, this is from my sister uh, April Jones in the chat showing some love. I want to say thank you to uh, April Jones for donating to the show. Guys, any show that we do, you guys can donate to it. So if we got 165 people watching, we almost had 200 people watching. If y'all would, if y'all haven't hit the thumbs up, please hit the thumbs up. That'll help share the show and let other people know that we are live. Uh, how many thumb? Matter of fact, moderators, how many thumbs up do we have right now? And I could tell by that. Also, I'm going to give a, a shout out to my guy, Thomas C. Thomas C donated uh, earlier today. I want to say thank you to my guy. Uh, let me see. Uh, hey, uh, hi, Jay. Just me uh, saying hi. I have a YouTube uh, channel named uh, Thomas Wilson. Uh, uh, let me see. All I do is read the uh, the Bible without music and I'm trying to learn how to play the guitar anyway if you get a chance to check it out tell me what you think as always keep doing what you're doing Malois man I will check that out brother I definitely will have time thank you very much can we get a few more thumbs up that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna figure out where we're where we're standing we only got a couple people to donate to the shows I mean seriously like I don't I don't know who's not hitting the thumbs up but I do know that a lot of the names that I see in here haven't even hit the thumbs up it's real easy to tell who's done it and who hasn't. Simple thing to do. If we could, please do that. Please. Thank you. So shout out to April, my guy Malois, my sister uh, Morning Soto, Tanisha in the chat, and to uh, my guy Thomas C. Thank you guys so much. Those are the ones that came through today. If any other ones come through, I will read them as they come through. For everybody else, just hit the thumbs up. Simple thing to do. So here we go. The guy on my screen right here, his name is uh, Caesar Sayok. A South Florida man with a criminal history 
of convictions was arrested Friday morning in connection to the string, which is of course this morning, obviously, right? Uh, to a string of uh, mail bombs sent to prominent Democrats this weekend. Here's what we know about him. He, um, a law enforcement official identified the suspect as Cesar or Caesar Cesar Sayak Jr., age 56, of Aventura, Florida, just north of Miami. Point number two: Mr. Sayak, a registered Republican, has a lengthy criminal history in Florida dating back to 1991 that includes felony theft, drug and fraud charges, as well as being accused of threatening to use a bomb. A uh, public records show. All right. Here's another point. His criminal record from Florida Department of Law Enforcement indicates that at the time of his of his last arrest in 2015, he was five foot eleven and 215 pounds. He has brown eyes, black hair, and a scar on his left arm. The record said that he was born in New York. The records listed Mr. Sayok's occupation as quote manager of what we don't know. So maybe if any of you guys in there know, let us know. Right. According to a 2012 bankruptcy petition filed in Miami, Mr. Sayok resided at the time at his mother's home. Let me read that again. Because this dude is what? Fucking 56 years old. According to a 2012 bankruptcy petition filed in Miami, he could have been lying, but we're going to assume that if he filed documents that he was being honest because we don't want to think that people are misusing the system. Mr. Sayok resided at the time at his mother's home. Bring him up as a Republican. Correct. Thank you, Alex. I noticed that too. I don't even know why that matters. He's just somebody doing messed up shit. If a criminal is a criminal, then you prosecute that criminal. I don't care. You know, if he believes in Jesus, Allah, Buddha, I don't think it matters. Uh, you know, a criminal is a criminal. Arrest a criminal for the criminal shit that they've done, period. Right? That's my opinion. So they said he lived at his mom in tw with his mom in 2012. Lives with mom. A handwritten note on the petition said has no furniture. Point number four. The suspect was arrested at about 11 a.m. in the parking lot of a shopping center in Plantation, Florida, west of Fort Lauderdale. Point number five. Patrol cars shut down surrounding streets, leaving rows of businesses inaccessible for part, for, uh, for part of the morning. A white van that was covered and uh, stickers was towed away from the scene in the late morning. Here's point number six. The Department of Justice has scheduled a news conference for 2.30 p.m. So that's if uh, depending on what uh, side of the country they are on for us. If it was 2.30, that'd be here in about two hours. Two more of the ex explosive devices were found on Friday. One addressed to Senator Cory Booker. We've already talked about that. And the other to James R. Clapper Jr., the former director of national intelligence. Now, the suspect's white van reminded David Simpkin and his girlfriend, who until recently lived in Aventura, Florida, of a van often parked in the parking lot of a, of a local strip mall. The shops at Waterways, Mr. Simpkin shared photos with the New York Times that showed a van covered in a number of stickers bearing the image of President Donald Trump and at least one anti-CNN sticker. Mr. Simpkin, age 39, said he lived near the mall and would see the van in the early morning when he walked his dog. It struck me because of the crazy conspir... Cons Let me see. It struck me because of the crazy conspiratorial stickers covering the windows, said Mr. Simpkin said Mr. Simpkin, a documentary film producer and editor. It was unsettling and it also seemed to be occupied. Sometimes the door would be ajar or a window would be open, which indicated to me that maybe somebody was living in the van. I never wanted to get too close, he added, though he saw the owner at least once. He described him as an older white man, but as we know, that's not his particular ethnicity. All right. Mr. Simpkins shared a cell phone picture he took of the van in the early morning of December 31st. The photo shows a van similar to the one seen in the footage being picked up by law enforcement this morning. So they're not confirming it. They're just saying it looks similar, right? He said the, uh, he said he caught the FBI after learning of the arrest on Friday. His girlfriend saw the van on TV 
and sent him a screenshot. Is this the van from the waterways? So that's what we have. And I want to thank Darcy Ann and Jason Gunn and everybody else that uh, sent me some information over. Let me check the email again. Here we go. Okay, I got. You. I just got your message, Brielle. I appreciate you uh, sending that over. Uh, guys, again, they have the suspect in custody. Caesar or Cesar Sayak Jr. Let me get his uh, picture up on the screen. This guy right here. Uh, Trina Jennings, thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much. We got a lot more content coming today. This content was unplanned, but I thank you guys for coming through. But we're going to get back to our reg regularly scheduled program here in just a minute. Um, check my email. On that LinkedIn profile, Sayak calls himself a promoter, a booking agent, and a choreographer of a male stripping show as well as burlesque shows in the Miami area. Sayok says that he graduated from Brevard College or B-R-E-V-A-R-D, Harvard, Brevard, I'm gonna say Brevard or Brevard College, uh, North Carolina University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Sayok said he attended 